<laughs> All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we invite you into this service, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your blessings and provision over our lives and, our, and your protection over our lives. We thank you so much, Lord, for everything that happened yesterday and everything that you're doing in our lives right now here today and in the future. And the Lord can reach back past, present, and future, and he can just heal us from the inside out and we thank you lord that you change us to be more like you from glory to glory father in jesus name we pray and worship you amen, amen. he is the king of our hearts stuff but that's not that's not good <laughs> we are in the river overflowing following the holy spirit we're guided and directed and blessed we have wisdom with understanding Rising. There is a current, strange. 
stirring deep inside It's overflowing From the heart of God The flood of heaven Crashing over us The tide is rising, rising Bursting, bursting Up from the ground We feel it now time in ministry that was an awesome time you know and we uh we enjoy food there's a pirate right there you know he had a little <laughs> hook a little kid with a hook a captain hook <laughs> captain hook amen there they gave away socks there's drifter there's our very own drifter and max oh, helping out man in the likeness the image of god and you come to him and psalm 145 and says this verse 12 through 14 says to make known to the sons of man your mighty acts 
God wants to do some mighty acts in your life here today. All right, people coming to the cross. We had crosses at both sides of the parking lot. If you weren't here, it was a good time. Baptisms. We had uh, little kids getting baptized as well as adults, male and female. All like in God's eyes, you know, he loves everyone. Amen. So we had some great times, some good testimonies. Ain't the first time we uh, baptized somebody with an ankle bracelet. We know that you can submerge them and they still work. Confluence band. closed out with some real powerful worship people worked hard uh, we had a good time together there's a picture of a group of us uh, with the t-shirts on the team oh look at dancing going on it was awesome Good times, huh? <laughs> that was our seventh annual Purpose Fest. And thank you all for being a part of that. That's wonderful. Now, we did. That was the best, wasn't it? That was the best weather ever. Probably the best we've ever had. Yeah. I, hey, I want to encourage you to make sure that you... Does everyone have a bulletin? We handed out some bulletins. And also on the back... As we do the message today, as I, you know, as we bring the word of God, you can fill in the blanks. And some of this in the future we're going to use for men's and women's Bible studies. Um, we're talking about putting a devotional together too. Nancy wants to put a devotional together, uh, you know, based on you know what we have going on here and you know some of the teaching and and what God is doing here. Hi, Dorothea. God bless you. And Stephen. And Stephen. Good to see you both. All right. So remember, as we go through the messages, fill out the blanks. And in the future, like on Tuesday night, we, we're going to start pretty soon some men's and women's of purpose groups. So that, you know, we can study this and go deeper. We want to, you know what, ingrain this inside of us so that, you know, it's a, God's word says write it, uh, you know, as, and speak it as you walk along the roadside. You know, and, and you got to get this in your life. you got to ingrain it in your life, and you'll see that your life will change. Your behaviors will change. God's Word is alive and active. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sharper than any two-edged sword, separating soul from spirit, thought from intent. We need that, don't we? Yes, we do. All right, praise God. Nancy, you're going to lead us in the offering, right? I am. So, Well, it's great to see all of you here today, and uh, it's wonderful to have everybody out. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? And before we begin uh, worshiping the Lord with our offerings, I want to mention that if you have a prayer request, uh, there is a card that was at your seat. It's um, most likely yellow, but there might still be a few blue ones out there. Uh, but if you have a prayer request, go ahead and fill it out, and you can just slip it in the offering when it comes by. And we would love to pray over your needs. Uh, so please do that. And while you're preparing your prayer requests and your offerings, I want to talk to you today a little bit about God's promises. You know, yesterday was our seventh annual Purpose Fest, and Pastor David was speaking on dominion and promise. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about these promises. Now, uh, there are different counts. You know, it kind of depends on what you want to call a promise, probably. So you won't find that everybody has the same count of how many promises there are in the Bible. Uh, but one count I found was some guy said there's 7,487 promises in the Bible made to people by God. Which is pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, in this day and age when nobody wants to commit to anything, you know, I just feel like it's, it's hard to get people to even promise anything these days. God has made a whole bunch to us which is really amazing. And some examples out of the Old Testament are we have Joshua 1.8, which says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So that's a great promise. And then we've got another one here. It's 1 Kings 2.3. It says, observe the requirements of the Lord your God 
and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, commands, regulations, and laws written in the law of Moses so that you'll be successful in all you do and wherever you go. So these are great promises. They pretty much tell you how you can be successful in your life. Uh, but there's a kicker. And the kicker is you have to do everything that's written in the book of Moses, in the law. These are all conditional promises, meaning that we have to meet a condition to receive the promises. And if there's one thing that the Old Testament taught us, it's that we can't do it, right? I mean, I feel like that's one of the main messages of the Old Testament. The children of God were chosen by God. He gave them his uh, words. No other people on earth did he give his words to like he gave them. And they just couldn't keep it. They couldn't do it. <laughs> and so, so we need some help with that. So that's the bad news. But there is some good news here. And the good news is, is that Jesus kept all the conditions of God's commandments. And the Bible says that if we have received Jesus into our lives, God will look at us like we've met those requirements just like Jesus did. And 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For as many as are the promises of God in Jesus, they are yes. You know, so that means that all the promises that God has made, they are yes for us in Jesus if we've received him into our life, which that's an amazing promise, isn't it? And some examples of that, uh, we've got John 1, 12, that says, but some people did accept him, they believed in him, and he gave them the right to become children of God. I mean, think about that, that we can become children of the creator of the universe. That's an amazing promise. And then we've got Romans 8, 1. So now anyone who is in Christ Jesus is not judged guilty. That's an amazing one. You know, no matter what it is that you may have done in your past and are going to do in your future, you are not judged guilty if you have received Jesus's righteousness and replacement for your sins. And then the next one is 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which I just noticed that uh, Pastor Kim posted this on her page, on her Facebook page just last week. It says, but as the scriptures say, no one else has ever seen, no one has ever heard, no one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And that's an amazing one. We can't even imagine, you know, just whatever you might think to yourself, that would be the greatest thing God could ever do for me. God's got something even better than that, something you can't even comprehend at this point. Uh, so that's an amazing promise. And these are all promises to us if we will just receive Jesus into our lives. You know, that's... An amazing thing. He's that key to unlock those promises. And so today, um, I know probably a lot of you have already received Jesus into your, into your hearts and into your life, but just in case, I just thought I would lead us in a prayer to do that today, in case there's anybody here who's never done that before. And if you all, even if you have done this before, if you wouldn't mind praying with us as well, I will, I will lead you and you can just repeat after me. So Lord Jesus... For too long, I've kept you out of my life. I know that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I gratefully receive your gift of salvation. I'm ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth to die on the cross and rising from the dead on the third day. Thank you for giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my Savior. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that for the very first time today, then congratulations, you have now come into all the promises that God has for you and that Jesus has for you. So that's an awesome thing. Yeah, we ought to clap for that in case there was anyone here who did that for the first time. So that is wonderful. And I want to encourage you as we're about to receive our offering and prayer requests, if you did that today for the first time also, I'd love to hear about it. 
you know, so if you wouldn't mind putting that on your prayer card as well, and you can just slip it in the offering when it comes by. And as we give uh, here at House of Purpose, we say that we give so others may live by faith in Jesus Christ. You know, and when you give here, you are helping the gospel to go out in this neighborhood so that other people find out about the goodness of God and all the promises that God has for them too, if they'll just receive him. And so as we give, I just want to let you know there's a couple of contactless ways to give. You can text PURPOSE to 45777, and uh, that'll be one way that you can do it. You'll get a link back to your phone in just a few seconds, and you can fill that out. Or you can go to houseofpurposechurch.org and go to online giving and give that way. Um, also, those of you on YouTube, if you wanted to mail us, uh, that'd be wonderful. House of Purpose, P.O. Box 202678, Denver, Colorado, 80220. Or we are totally fine with contact in here. So, <laughs> so if you want to give with an offering envelope, uh, we are perfectly fine with that as well. And so we just want to thank you for that. And I'm going to pray over the offering and our prayer requests. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We thank you, Lord, for all of those promises that you made to us, God. And Lord, we thank you that you found a way, even though we were not faithful, you found a way through your Son uh, to pull us into your kingdom and to make us your children, Lord. So we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you would use this offering to cause the gospel to go out even further, Lord, than it has been. Lord, I pray you'd bless each one who gives, God. Lord, that you're supplying their needs as they give into your kingdom. And then, Lord, we pray over every single prayer request, Lord, that's coming in. Lord, I know that you are going to have your perfect will in their lives, Lord, and that you care about every detail in their lives, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you alone are worthy. And we stand and worship in awe of you. We, we adore you, Lord.
teaching to Pastor David. I thank you, Lord, that you have prepared our hearts and our minds to receive a word from you this day. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, how, how many of you know God gets mileage out of everything? And I know the um, first part, when we were trying to record the worship, it did um, come across. So we got a number of options for that, I think, Tim. We could use some purpose fest footage. We could do a lot of things, right? Yeah. So, or we can do a longer worship set at the end. Yeah. Praise God. You guys like to worship, don't you? Yes. Amazing. Can we turn that light on too? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say thank you, Lonnie. Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. For helping with the lights. You know, all of it works together. You guys are a blessing. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. Sandy worked so hard ye yesterday. Boy, we're so proud of all of you yeah. that was out there praying and worshiping. And, wow, it was a good time. Are we ready, Matt? All right. Today's message is moving on to next. Moving on to next. And it's in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1 through 11 is where we'll be. Now, last week's message we talked about two statements. One was, if only, where we kind of reflect on the past, and if only I would have done this. But next time, thinks of the future, doesn't it? It says, well, what am I going to do next time? Do you remember that? Some of you remember that message from last week? Yep. 
So if only, only lives in the past. There's nothing that you can do about it. You can't, I mean, you could repeat the past, but you can't go back and relive it, right? Come on, some of you know better than that, right? We can't go back and relive it, right? So have you ever found yourself looking at the past and saying, if only you start to think, if only I had listened? How many of you made that statement? Probably all of us, right? Yeah. If only I had listened. If only she really loved me. You ever heard people say that? If only she would have really loved me, the marriage would have worked out. Or the relationship would have worked out. If only he would have loved me. That type of statement, if only. There's nothing whatsoever you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about that. But you can let go of the if onlys and start living for next time. So we're going to talk about some next time things about moving on to next. Amen? Say, so what's next? What's next? Let's look. See, next time. It considers the future, right? Yes. Next, as we talked about last week, seeks godly counsel so that we don't repeat the and have another if only, right? right. Yeah. And we need to ask God to lead us into all truth, to lead us into truth. We, gotta, we need to ask God to do that, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to shut this amp off. Maybe that will kill some of the... No, it doesn't kill the home. We'll just live with it. Amen? Amen? If only there wasn't a buzz in the amp, right? <laughs> next time. But next time. <laughs> We're going to work on that, right, Matt? So doing things God's way makes our next time a time of victory, doesn't it? We start to say, hey, God, what are you teaching me through this present time that I'm living in? What are you teaching me? What am I supposed to learn, God? We need to learn so that we can enter into the bright future that God has for us. And we see so many people living a bright future in God as they tap into God's promises. You know, for Purpose Fest, we talked about dominion and promise. We can't live out dominion until we learn God's promises. We can't live it out right. We can't manage life correctly until... We understand God's word until we understand God's promises. Until we do that, we're destined to do a whole bunch of if onlys. But if the like goes, oh, you know what I found with God is is this that God can speak one word into your life and it can change your whole outlook. Yes, <laughs> right? One yeah. simple verse, one simple thing that He's spoken into your life. Can I get a witness in here? I remember one time uh, my friend Jerry passed away and he, he died suddenly. He was killed in, in Phoenix, Arizona. It's one of those unsolved mysteries. You know? And, and it was a hard time to go through because he was really close. Have you ever had a really close friend? Well, it was like one of the, those situations, okay? And I couldn't figure out why it happened. I didn't understand why it happened. In fact, I was distraught for a period of time. I remember going into a parking lot and, and yelling up to God, like, why? Why did this happen? God was strangely silent for a long period of time. And he let me get over myself for a little bit. And I remember, because, you know, when you're full of yourself, you don't really tend to listen to God. You're doing all the speaking, right? And you're rehashing things in your mind. So he made me wait. And so during that waiting time, God spoke into my life. He said, Stephen looked up steadfastly to heaven. And do you know that comforted me? Because I thought about Jerry. Jerry was a believer. And I knew he was looking up towards heaven. He wasn't, at that moment, God was comforting me, saying he, he, he wasn't really feeling any pain. He was focused on me. Stephen, in Scripture, it was similar. He was being stoned to death. And he says, lay this not to their charge, Lord. 
Do you remember that in the book of Acts? In the book of Acts, you know, he, he, he offered forgiveness even when being stoned to death. Tell me he wasn't living in comfort. He was saying, you know, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man. Amen? He made that statement. I see, I see Jesus. That's what I see in my struggle, in my trial. And that's what we need. We need the voice of God. We need the voice of the Lord in our lives to put us over the top. When we're in a desperate situation, and I'm sure all of you have been there, and you know it's different for every person, but we all go through trials. We all go through tribulations. But it is the Lord and the voice of the Lord that, that really puts us over the top, isn't it? Philippians 3, verse 13 through 15, it says, Brothers and sisters, do not consider that I have made it my own yet. He says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Remember the if only. So I'm forgetting what lies behind. But I look forward to what's ahead. God, with his word, causes us to look forward to what's ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize. See, I press on. I can't do anything about the past, is what Paul is saying, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You'll find that a lot in Scripture, that we need to be in Him. Amen? We need to rest in Him. We need to hear from Him, don't we? All of us who want to become mature and do not want to repeat the past, all of us. Thank you, sir. All of us. Pastor Dave, you're bummed. <laughs> God bless you, Mark Jackson. All of us. We love you. All of us who are mature are pursuing. Well, what's happening is we're pursuing spiritual perfection. Spiritual. You say, how can I be perfect? In Christ you are. In Christ you are. In His sight, you are. So we should have this attitude. The Apostle Paul says to the Philippians, and if any respect you have a different attitude, that too God will make clear to you. Amen? Sometimes we need a slight attitude adjustment. Adjustment. So we can have a different altitude adjustment. Amen? Right. Attitude and altitude. They're kind of simultaneously. It's a picture that you're, that you're getting, right? Amen? You get a heavenly picture rather than an earthly perspective. So point number two is this. To realize our future. To, to be moving on to the next time. What's next? We need to press into the call of God in our lives. How many of you feel like God has called you to do something with your life? Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's all called us to love each other. Amen. And I was so proud of all of you and what you've done yesterday and loving the people that came through. It was so awesome. That's pressing in and pressing on to God's call. That's seeing past my if onlys and, and living. And you know, we think about that. That was the seventh annual Purpose Festival. You know, now we look on to the eighth. Amen. New beginnings. New beginnings. Eight is new beginnings. So Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1 through 2 as we enter into our text today. My son... My daughter, he would say to you, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments, if, if you receive them, you treasure them within you, amen, so that your ear is attentive, that you're hearing, okay, what do you want me to hear so that I have a really good next time? To have skillful, godly wisdom. It's something you do with wisdom, right? 
You carry it out. It's made for living. It's not. Knowledge is something you consume with your head. Wisdom is something that you accomplish with your doing as well as receiving. Amen? Yep. Amen? And apply it to your heart to understand and to seek conscientiously and, and to strive for it, to strive for it. God, I want to hear how to do this right so that my next time is an incredible time. Amen? Amen. My next time right. is the best time. I want to share with you that your best days are ahead <coughs> if you look ahead. Amen. Amen. And striving for it eagerly. I want, to, I want to grab a hold of that statement. Eagerly. Eagerly living for the future. Amen. Amen. Eagerly. <coughs> to move on. See, family, to move on to next. To move on to next, we need to receive God's word by treasuring it eagerly waiting for the next thing that he's going to say to us in anticipation do you remember that commercial with the heinz ketchup bottle anticipation keeping me waiting if you buy you know you get the cheap ketchup that's kind of like what everybody's saying in the world the cheap ketchup you know you just squeeze it once and it squirts all over the place and splatters. But Heinz ketchup is the, is, the, is, the, is a bomb, right? <laughs> Heinz ketchup is a bomb. So when you get it, it tastes so much better. Nancy told me, quit buying that great value. Let's get the good stuff. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so you can get cheap advice. Amen? It kind of splatters all over you. <laughs> what, the hell, what the heck did that just mean? <laughs> or you get what you pay for. You also get what you pray for, amen? <laughs> so that's part of faith. But we need to move on, receive God's word. We need to have eager anticipation, amen? So verse 3 through 5 says, yes, if you, you know, if you cry aloud for insight, aloud. What does that mean? That's speak it out of your mouth. Say, hey, God. I'm looking forward for your insight. Hey, God, I lift, I lift up my voice for understanding. I, I cry out to you. Yes. I want to tell you a secret. The devil comes and he introduces thoughts into your mind. Right. And it says, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Find out what God is saying about it. Don't just receive anything. But lift up your voice for understanding. Cry out for insight. If you seek skillfully God's wisdom as you would silver, if you would seek God's wisdom as you would silver, and, and search for her as you would hidden treasures. You know, during Solomon's time, that silver was more plentiful than anything, but yet this man is saying, Solomon is saying, still seek that wisdom. You don't treat it as commonplace. Gold was, was something that wasn't is incredibly um, uh, common, uh, but yet Solomon was the richest man ever in the world. And he says, however, seek after silver. Seek after some simple understanding is what he's saying. And search for her as you would for hidden treasures. Don't treat it as common. Because if you value it, your next time is going to be so much better. He says, then will you understand? Will you understand and have reverent fear of the Lord, meaning that Wow, God, you are so awesome. I am just anticipating. When you speak to me, I'm not treating it as common. No, I, it's, it's a time for worshiping and regarding him as truly awesome. That's what reverence means. That God, I just hinge on your every word. 
And I want to discover something that's beyond knowledge. It's, see, it's wisdom. And the Believer's Bible Commentary puts it this way. What we need is the same kind of drive as men mining for silver. So when you read the Word of God, mine, mine that Word. Dig deeper. As if you're searching for something that is going to change your life. Searching for hidden treasure. Trage it's a tragedy that too often men show more zeal for acquiring material wealth than spiritual riches. Solomon says, hey, let me have wisdom before I go out and come in before this people, God. And God says, because you did not desire earthly wisdom, Solomon, because you didn't ask for the lives of your enemies, because you didn't ask for gold as a tangible substance, but, or even silver, I'm going to give you all that. But the way that you are going to obtain that valuable thing in life is to treasure my wisdom. And because, Solomon, you have come and you said, I desire wisdom above everything else so that I can lead this nation of Israel. So that you can lead your home. The, 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 so that, that you can carry out life with whatever it is that you currently have. If you will seek God above everything else, if you will reverence Him, then all these things will be added unto you. If you seek the Lord more than anything else, if you desire Him above all else, the material things, they catch up over time. But see, God is not principally concerned with your comfort. What he is concerned with is your character. And your character is worth more than any earthly treasure you could ever obtain. And you must not forfeit that in your life. See, you're called to be a prince, a princess of the kingdom of God. One that is like Esther that is able to go and speak before kings and share God's wisdom with them so that a nation would avert disaster. Think about how important God's wisdom is because of the fact that you could not only sidestep disaster in your life but cause others to not step into disaster because you impart God's wisdom that He has shared with you. You have been with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as a prince, as a princess of God. We are never disappointed when we receive from God, when we really know God, when we desire Him. See, He is the silver that we seek. That's why one of the early church fathers said that a man who seeks God has already found him. Christ reveals the Father to all of us that believe. To know Christ is to know God. To know Christ is everything. Point number four. Now then, moving on to next, our life requires a life-giving relationship with Christ, with the living Word of God. When you pursue Him, see, you discover the very meaning of your life. That's the secret of it all. When you seek Him, you discover why you were made. Have you ever thought and looked down at your fingerprint and said, what does all this mean? And yet not even look at your fingerprint and realize, hey, no one else has one like these, this. The DNA in your body, no one else has the same 
DNA. Do you think that God knows how to apply wisdom into you specifically for this time? I do. Can somebody give Jesus a shout? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you pursue him, you discover the meaning of life. And all this stuff catches up with you. And after, after it's caught up with you, you're like, wow. You know what? What used to matter for to me doesn't matter that much anymore, and you start giving stuff away. People that don't know who they are, they, they hoard everything up. They try to consume. That's why they're called consumers. <laughs> you know, have you ever heard that term? Consumers. We go shopping sometimes and watch how much toilet paper is gone from the aisle. Uh, nobody can possibly consume that much toilet paper. I mean, I'm sorry, but um, it's starting. It's appearing on the shelf again. Thank God. But yeah, now all the paper towels are disappearing. But if you seek after toilet paper, you'll never gain any wisdom out of that. <laughs> but as we continue on in verse six through eight, so we don't digress too far down that road. For the Lord gives skillful, godly wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge. It comes, comes understanding. He stores away sound wisdom for the righteous. He stores it away. Wow, there's a treasure chest of this stuff. Those who are right standing with him, he stores it away. He's ready to open it up to us, though. He has a shield to those that walk in integrity. Integrity. There's something to maintain. Those of honorable character and moral courage. You know, we need moral courage in our world today, don't we? Amen. Somebody to stand up and say, that's not right. Amen. Instead of saying, I want my rights. How about we say, that's not right. Not right yes. Amen. Amen. And here's why, because I love you, and God says this, God says that. So I want to share this with you, and I want to pray with you, that you would receive what I've received, this richness and this glory that God has for you. See, He guards the paths of justice, and He preserves the way of His saints, the believers. You're like, I thought saints were statues in Rome. No. You're a saint when you believe in God, when you receive His riches and His wisdom. See, He guards the paths of those who, who have clean, moral lives. Not of their own doing. It's not that I, I cleaned myself up and somehow I came to God. No, I sought God and, and God cleaned me up from the inside out. His saints, see, they escape, they escape pain and bitterness. What does bitterness do? It, it traps us in our past. We're chained to something that somebody else had done to us. And they've forgotten all about it. But we're chained to our past because of bitterness. They don't even realize how bad they hurt you. God wants to speak into your life that you would move forward. You know, we offer freedom appointments for people so that we can pray with you and encourage you to embrace the wisdom of God and release the pain of bitterness and release those things and learn what it means really to forgive. I want to share with you a couple things right now that God is telling me to share with you. What the world is not telling you is that life, love is a choice. The feelings catch up, like wisdom. When I do it, and when I believe, then the feelings catch up. When I forgive, I make a choice. And God isn't saying ignore the pain that you felt because God loves you and He's a caring God. He knows that you're in pain. 
And you can share that with him. But, in order to move forward, you've got to make a choice to forgive. Like love, forgiveness is a choice. I choose to love. People enter into relationships. And what they do is they say, hey, what's in it for me? They get married and they say, hey, I, this person somehow is going to fulfill my dreams. The problem with that is you're, you're like a consumer of love. You're not a lover. You're not one who loves. No, you're seeking love. Isn't this true? In pursuing Christ and the Lord's wisdom, you avoid the troubles of the past. And you press on to a treasured future. You choose again to love. You choose to find out what God says about love, not the world. And you choose to understand forgiveness. God's way. It's always the best way. Amen? Amen. Always. Always, always, always. And you press on to what's treasured, what's of value. A treasured future. Do you want a future that is really just a treasure? Or do you want to always say, if only? Do you want to say, what's next, God? I want to see what's next. I want to do this one right. Amen? Proverbs 2, 9 through 11. It says, then you will understand righteousness and justice in every circumstance, not just some, and integrity in every good path. See how this is a treasure? For skillful, godly wisdom will enter your heart if you're ready to receive it. And knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Sometimes you can share truth with someone and they will ignore the Word of God. Or say, I don't need to pray today. I'm fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're rehearsing their past. They don't want to let it go. But God wants you to let it go. He wants you to understand righteousness and justice in every circumstance and integrity and to have a good path. For the skillful and godly Wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding and discernment. They'll guard you from making mistakes, from having if-onlys, and having a next time. Discretion is the ability to make wise decision and it saves a person from many a bad trip. You ever been on a bad trip? I know I have. Yeah, Want to get off that trip. <laughs> bad vacation. Bad, bad, bad. Oh. Sound judgment delivers us from involvement with wicked men. Shows us to choose our friends wisely, doesn't it? Yeah. None of us realizes to the extent to which we are daily preserved spiritually, morally, physically from perils because of God. We have no idea because of the way, the times we have sought out God, that God wants to not us have us go off a cliff in, in stupidity. Amen? Can we say stupidity today? Amen. I don't want to do stupid. I've done enough stupid, okay? Amen. You raise both hands and two feet, you might fall over, and that would look really stupid. But the Christian enjoys a well-guarded life. They do. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. What is lust? It's a perversion to God's love. It's like thinking of a, a, a man thinking of a female as an object instead of a princess of God. That was revelation to me at one time in my life. And God said that, hey, why are you looking at her that way? 
She's my princess. So, whoa. That makes you take a step back, right? Say, so, well, how am I looking at life? You know, if I was just looking at this one situation this way, then we have to guard our eyes because men have become visionary. They have a vision aspect to them like no one else. That's why Satan uses the trap of what you can see through your eyes. He wants you to see men spiritually. To gain understanding that is beyond the senses and beyond the, 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 the norms of society and what they think is acceptable. He wants to impart vision into your life. So I speak to you men today from the standpoint of vision. Ladies, I speak to you from the standpoint of detail. God knows that you desire security. He also knows and is concerned about every detail and aspect of your life. He's able to manage it all. And hold the universe all together in all its detail. Amen? And men, we have to listen to women because they hold a lot of detail that we don't see with our vision. Amen? So treasure them too. Treasure each other. Amen? As children and daughters of God. Samuel 25, 33. And blessed be your dis discernment and uh, your discretion and, and discernment. And blessed be you who has kept me from bloodshed this day and from avenging it for my own hands. As David speaks, he could have entered into anger, he could have killed someone. God used a young lady to speak into his life. To say this ain't right. This guy deserves to die. Alright? He does. According to what he did to you. But David, you are more important than that. To God. To enter into that and live in a place of regret. And live in a place of saying, I wish I would have. So David received the wisdom. Proverbs 19, 11. Good sense and discretion make a man slow to anger. And it is his honor and glory to overlook a transgression. You know what a transgression is? It's like stepping over the boundary. Okay? It's like me walking up. Okay, I walk up to Nate. I know I can't see, we can't see this on the camera, but I step on Nate's foot. It's totally disregarding it, right? Hey, how does that feel? Okay. <laughs> That's a transgression. Okay? That's a transgression. Instead of showing this man some respect, amen? All right. You're all right, too. All right, brother. Yeah. So instead of transgression, we act in wisdom towards each other. So, overlooking transgression or an offense without seeking revenge, without harboring resentment, because those things, see, they lead to a place where we wish we wouldn't have said it, wish we wouldn't have did it. Near the if only times. But overlooking a transgression is a better way. Amen? When we operate in the Lord's discretion, we do not repeat the failures of the past, but instead we, we move on to the next victory. Amen? We move on to the next victory. Nancy's wondering if I'm going to say it. I'm moving on to a victory. There's a motorcycle called a victory. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Second Corinthians three, 
17 through 18. Right now, I'm looking at victories. We need to be looking at victories. All right. So, <laughs> Second Corinthians, she's very discerning. Um, <laughs> so, Second Corinthians 3:17 through 18 as I close. Now, the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. See, a victory has a freedom motor in it. It does, doesn't it? It's called the freedom motor. And you need to have a freedom motive, amen? Anticipating. You know, uh, you know, an escape in bondage, and getting into freedom, amen? And we will all, with unfailed bases, faces, continually... Seeing as in a mirror the glory of God. <clears throat> Don't you want to see the glory of God shining through your face? Because you're made in God's image. When you look in a mirror to say, hey, this was a good day. This was a real good day. God, thank you for making it for me because you love me. Thank you for speaking to me and I listen. They are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to another which comes from the Lord who is spirit you know here's the thing when you read God God's Word receive it in spirit receive it in truth receive it not as rules but receive it as life because God is a life-giving spirit that had you know, had, uh, as, 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 as sure as the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the Spirit of the Lord has raised Him from the dead, and so we will be raised to life by the Spirit. And so we cannot read the Word from a standpoint of mere rules and abstract something that's separate from us, and I hope to obtain it. No, it has to gain entrance into us as Spirit and life. Amen? Amen? So as I close right now, let's, let's review. We need to learn to live for the bright future that God has prepared for us and, and to realize the future by moving on to the next time. We need to press into the call that God has on our lives. And to move on, we need to receive God's Word by treasuring it with eager anticipation. God's wisdom is a key to the bright future that's ahead of us. Now then, do you want to move on to next? For our life requires a life-giving relationship with Christ. When you pursue Him, He is everything. He is the gold for your life. He is the silver that is refining you. That you are being changed from glory to glory and faith to faith. And I desire more of it. In pursuing Christ and the Lord's wisdom, you will avoid the troubles and the pitfalls that everyone else seems to fall into, including your own family members. And then when they look at your life, and they say, I want the life that He has because... I keep falling into a pit, and for some reason they don't. I keep falling into bitterness, and they don't. I keep falling into unforgiveness, and they don't. And my relationships are disastrous, and theirs are not. Can you tell me more about this wisdom of this God that you serve? When we operate in the Lord's discretion, see... We do not repeat the failures of the past, but we move on to next, and the next, and the next victory. Let's pray. Pray with me here today. Say, I desire, I desire to, move to move on to the next, to the next. By, receiving your wisdom, by receiving your wisdom, 
the Lord Jesus. I will operate in the wisdom of your word, the Holy Bible, daily. I do realize that stepping out with discernment of your wisdom causes me to avoid the traps of past responses toward life. I now step out, empowered by the Holy Spirit, in obedience and faith towards the victory of life that you have for me. God bless you. Hey, we're going to worship. Can we worship? Let's thank God for this treasure we received today. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> you know what? I, I love getting to hear from the Lord every week through our pastor, Pastor David and Nancy. I just love their dedication and, and just um, their accountability and their prayer warriors. And just, you know, I'm blessed every single week and, and I feel led by the Lord. And I love the connection and the fellowship that I have with everybody here in the community. And uh, I just want to tell, tell the Lord I'm so thankful for that. And thank you for bringing us all together. And, you know, it's so encouraging to worship with all of you guys and to learn with you guys and, and to know that we are um, serious prayer warriors. You know, that's important. We're, we're so blessed. I feel like it's important. And, of course, uh, God did that. So, you know, I want to honor that. I want to honor the fact that God uses all of us together so we can go out there in the community and just bless others and bring them into the kingdom like what happened yesterday. That is what it's all about. He is the king of our hearts.
I'll try another step, but that's not that's not good. <laughs> we are in the river, overflowing, following the Holy Spirit. We're guided and directed and blessed. We have wisdom with understanding.
Pastor David, did you want us to do Life is Too Short? Okay. That's a good one. That is a really good one. Let me see if I have it in the PowerPoint. We will get a PowerPoint soon for that. I don't think I have it in my book. Oh, is it in alphabetical? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, run towards God. Sometimes it's the hardest to remember to do that whenever you're struggling. It, it's the hardest thing to turn to God when, it, when you're down and out. But oh my gosh, it makes a difference. It makes a difference.
Yes, it's like what Pastor David said. Run to the Lord only. Run to the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you guys. We love you. God loves you. We'll see you next week. I can't wait to get started on the midweek stuff. The Bible studies, that's going to be amazing. Okay. Oh, yes, that was awesome. Hey, also we're going to open our resources.